Hey guys, welcome to Winecraft. My name is Mario Luna with MarioLunaSom.com, where we provide wine education for real life. This week is for the sweet wine lovers. You, me, yay. Anyway, but uh, I'll get to the sweet wine part in a moment, but I have to start with this question. Do you know when wine's harvested? In the Northern Hemisphere like United States, Canada, Europe, they're mostly harvested, uh, they, they take the grapes and they create the wine in September, late August, right around that time frame. But in the Southern Hemisphere, it's actually six months ahead. It's actually in March. So just keep that in mind. But there are different styles of wine after the grapes are normally harvested and they're called late harvest. And when they leave the grapes on the vine a little bit longer, more nutrients go in there the acidity drops and the sugar goes up. So you get that sweet wine note. And uh, I, love, I love the process. So I'm gonna open up my notes. I'm gonna go over four different wines. One's from Canada and three are from Europe. So at the end of this particular wine craft, get your sweet tooth going and let's get started. So here are examples of late harvest wine. Number one and two are actually the same. So number one, in the Niagara Falls area, they have ice wine with a varietal called Vidal Blanc. It's like a little French-American hybrid. Lots of mango, lots of apricot, lots of honey and brown sugar. I love it, very ripe fruit there. While in Germany, they refer to ice wine as ice wine. So you see the different spelling there. The varietals recently, but there's a lot more peach, lime, grapefruit, stone, and wet slate. But what they have in common is that they are picked in no between November and January and when the vine's frozen. When the vine is frozen. Just keep that in mind. Once the, it's very simple in that process. They'll just take the grapes, crush it. All the ice goes with the juice. It separates and that and that's how the ice wine is created. These are amazing. Number three is Hungary. And Hungary has a wine called Tokai. Tokai normally has varietals of ferment, muscat, harsh I can I can spell that for you, but it's really not that important for this particular uh, wine craft. But the flavor is very interesting. I mean, lots of lime, lots of orange, apricot, and honey, chalk, and stone. So are you starting to notice a little difference here to where in Canada, you get much more ripe fruit, ripe mango, apricot, honey notes, while in Europe, you're starting to get a little bit more citrus fruits as well. So this is a preference that maybe separates you, with your purchasing, if you find different types of late harvest, you can find the correct one for you. So as far as the production is concerned, they usually pick it very late, like October, November, December, somewhere around that time. And they'll take the grapes, create the wine, age in barrels, and it, with yeast. And it actually creates a little bit of a fruity, then dry finish. The sweetness is there, but it has a dry feeling. Very fun 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 wine and the best it's called botrytis it's in an area called Sauterne in Bordeaux France and botrytis is actually a fungus it's it's not gross but here's the process they'll go into the grapes break into the skin and it just starts sucking away at all the liquid all the water content so all it leaves is the grapes raise it all the sugars are left and it is a beautiful process. It's just a, a natural reaction in the, in the environment. And it takes grapes normally of Simeon, Sauvignon Blanc, and Muscadel. And so with that Botrytis note, it actually gives it a little bit of a gingered feel. Lots of honey, lemon, apricot, hazelnut. But if you can find one, there's a lot of good values in there between like $20 and $40. But there's one that's called Chateau de Kim and there's a half bottle that goes out there for $700 and it's not made unless it's a perfect vintage. 
So if you are looking for the best of the best of the late harvest wines, the Botrytis effect in Bordeaux, France is the way to go. So here are the four examples of late harvest wine. Well, I hope you enjoy the information with this week's wine craft of late harvest wines and check out the selections that we have on the bottom of the page. Let us know what you think if you get a chance to try them. We love your feedback. They all actually have the one thing in common. It, the wine pairing, Asian cuisine, any, Chinese, Vietnamese, Japanese, the sugars, the sweet tangy sauces, the salty sauces, and the proteins that it's offered throughout this cuisine. Uh, it, it's perfect for these wines. And the best part is you don't have to share it with anybody because all the examples are half bottles. No complaints here. So you don't have to share it with anybody. Finish it yourself. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.